everyone, it's Vanessa. I'm here to do another library haul because I'm basically almost done with all the books that I checked out in my last library haul and I had some holds come in which I'm really excited to get to. In my last haul I had a book by Pamela Paul that was her memoir about reading and in this haul after reading that one and having her talk about by the book I decided to go pick it up. And this is a New York Times book review column that appears in the New York Times. They interview people who have like public personalities in our media media and in our government and as writers etc. So they just ask them questions about what they've been reading, what they're excited to be reading. I've read the first two of these. Neil Gaiman's made me laugh out loud and I've already found books that I want to read because of their thoughts and recommendations in this book. So I think this is going to be fun to kind of go in and out of and read a few at a time. I also really enjoy the illustrations which I learned recently from Val at Bala Reads that all of the illustrations are by Jillian Tamaki which is awesome because I love Jillian Tamaki. The next book on here is one that I wanted to check out because I feel like I don't know enough about dogs considering I own a dog. I wanted to learn more so I got The Secret Language of Dogs by Victoria Stillwell. I will admit that what caught me to this is the very like fluffy way that it looks. It has a lot of pictures so it's very general which I appreciate. I I've liked it as someone who literally knows almost nothing. I just know enough to keep my dog alive. I guess I'm doing all nonfiction first. Um, the next nonfiction that I picked up is Unmentionable by Therese O'Neill. This one I have been wanting to read for a while, probably since I first heard about it on a Book Olives channel. I've seen other people that I love to watch read it as well and enjoy it. Most recently Brie read it and enjoyed it. I tried to listen to this on audiobook and I feel like I was just distracted and I also kind of wanted to read it in physical form because there are a lot of illustrations in here. I think this is going to do that much better for me, having the pictures right there as I am reading it. But I'm excited to get to this and to see the snarky way that she discusses how we think about the Victorian era and how it's not necessarily at all how we picture it in movies, that it was actually a lot grosser and not a time that I would want to be living in. The last nonfiction is a really tiny book that I feel goes hand in hand with my reading of On Tyranny by Timothy D. Snyder last month and that is The Trouble with Reality, A Rumination on Moral Panic in Our Time by Brooke Gladstone. Brooke Gladstone does the On the Media podcast with WNYC with Bob Garfield that I really enjoy. The podcast mostly focuses on the way that the media depicts stories. I really value the way that they look at different media stories. That's the kind of stuff that I studied when I was in college in my telecom degree. My concentration was on media and society and I really love the way that the media and society kind of combine and merge and affect each other. So this is Brooke Gladstone's like little pamphlet that she wrote after the election of Donald Trump. She is looking at what reality has become? Is reality even really reality anymore? She says, reality, it used to seem so simple. Reality just was, like the weather. Why question it, let alone disagree about it? And then came the assault, and an unending stream of fake news, alternative facts, and lies disguised as truth, all of it overwhelming our notions of reality. Now we can't even agree on what a fact is, let alone what is real. I won't say no to a tiny book. The last four things are all fiction. The first one is one that I have had on my like 2017 reading list that I want to get to this year. I think it's just time. I was wanting to finish Pride and Prejudice before I got to this, but I think I'm just going to try this and then see if this inspires me to go back to Pride and Prejudice. So I'm going to be trying to read uh, Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. I feel like I, I've heard more positive things about the writing style and the plot and the way this moves along. So I just need to read some classics. I know that there are classics out there for me, but I, I always feel more hesitant to pick them up than I do like normal fiction. So we'll see. The next thing is a book that I have seen hyped so much on booktube lately and I've seen it on probably more than five channels that I watch and I trust so I think I'm gonna ride the hype train with them and read The Clay Girl by Heather Tucker. I was kind of surprised that this book is almost a year old. I thought that it was a new release and that's why everybody was so excited about it but I really think the way booktube operates is someone with a lot of subscribers and with a lot of like following, like people who trust them a lot. If they say a book is really good then kind of the masses of booktube follow because we all want to read good books so we trust 
people who have similar reading tastes to us. A lot of people that I watch have really enjoyed The Clay Girl and love the whimsical take that the main character has and, and also really enjoy that the main character is a young girl but this book is written for adults and that's not something that you read often or I read often in adult books. I don't read many adult books with young characters. I feel like the last one I probably read was extremely loud and incredibly close like ages ago. So I'm hoping that I enjoy The Clay Girl like everybody else. And last but not least, graphic novels. So the first one I was really excited about, I still have my tags on it from the library. I have seen it on channels that I trust. When it comes to graphic novel tastes, it's just a monster. It's just huge. So that is my favorite thing is monsters. Can you believe when I read this, I was reading the back right and it has a little blurb by Alex and Beck though. I was like, how much does this book cost? $39.99. I can't. So I got this from the library, obviously, and it came in really quickly, which is exciting because I know other people have been waiting on hold. It's a murder mystery, a family drama, a sweeping historical epic, a psychological thriller about monsters real and imagined, within and without. It's set in the tumultuous political backdrop of the late 1960s in Chicago, and it's narrated by a 10-year-old. It's told through a fictional graphic diary, employing the iconography of B-movie horror imagery and pulp monster magazines. And it looks really cool. Cool. It looks like somebody's journal. We'll see what I end up thinking about the actual plot and everything going on in here. This is a sizable graphic novel, so I'm hoping that the plot is expansive and doesn't drag on. Last but not least was something that I actually expected to get the first volume of, but I probably was just not looking very closely and I got the first issue of. I'm pretty certain the first volume has come out, so I don't know how I got them confused on the catalog, but that is the first issue of Spell on Wheels. So I'm gonna to try to see if I can get the first volume, but until then, I'll read this first issue. And this follows a trio of witches, which I really am excited about because I love stories about witches and I don't read nearly enough. If I can hold this up so you can see some of the art. Um, but yeah, it's just gonna follow these girls. There's another ticket. I don't know much about it, I just know that there is mystery involved and suspense. I hope that the relationships between the three girls are really lovely and that I find like new witches that I could root for in like charm style. That is it for me in this other library haul for the month of August. I hope that you enjoyed learning about some of the books that I just picked up at the library and if you have read or want to read any of these let me know in the comments. Bye bye. Employing the iconography. Iconic, iconography? <laughs>